Benjamin, what are you doing? У вас есть передо мной есть очень крутой сайт по поиску работы. И здесь я заметил, что есть куча отличных вакансий для студентов, mm -hmm. для молодых людей. Заметь, что может подрабатывать и совмещать mm -hmm. учебу с, с работой oh, и yeah. получить хороший опыт. Ну, довольно <laughs> круто. I remember my first job, and I would I was not actually a student back then, but God, was it an interesting experience. Да, я... Так, I кстати, would я тоже... like to know about your first job. Ну, это довольно интересная тема. Ну, Tell давай me. поделимся нашими опытами. Yeah, let's do that. Ну, что ж, давайте начнем. Well, Benjamin, before I ask my main question, tell me, at what age is it legally possible to start working in England? Well, yes, закон и yes, политики разных компаний. Может быть, с 13 лет. Mm -hmm. Может быть. Но есть ограничения в этом. Meaning, like, part-time, full-time, like, mm -hmm. how many hours you Подработка work? только для подростков. То how есть... many hours are we talking? Примерно 5 часов по максимуму. A week? Um, в день. В день. Five multiplied by five, Может so it's more like 25, 20, 25 hours. It's not bad. Oh, actually, it's да. not bad. Это много, если честно. Если есть um, школа. Mm -hmm. It's like you have to kind of jiggle, you know. Нужно the... совмещать и аккуратно. So spill the beans, what was your first job? Я был посудомойщик. In a restaurant? По посудомойщиком. <laughs> В ресторане это было... Вторая работа. Ну, я работал в своем общежитии эм, в универе. Oh. И там была у нас большая столовая для студентов. Dining hall. До этого я занимался мелкими работками. Mm -hmm. ну, ну, это была моя первая работа. How old were you? 18. It's 18. Да. Okay. 18 Is that okay to ask how much you were making? Да, оклад составила, mm -hmm. наверное, составил... 9 фунтов за час. Ну, совсем so неплохо you, so для студентов. Well, actually, it's not that bad. Для студентов it's not that неплохо. Bad. What is the minimum wage right now? Минимальный размер оплаты труды в Англии может быть 8 фунт. Mm -hmm. Может быть. Ну, нужно подтвердить mm -hmm. это в интернете. So, just to kind of, you know, sum it up. So, you were working as... Oh, what do you call that in English? A, a dishwasher, dish yeah. A dishwasher when you were 18 making around nine pounds per hour. Это совсем неплохо было. Ну, ну, работал всего лишь четыре часа в день. Тогда это не было как большие деньги. Ну, это было достаточно. Did you do it like the whole year, or was it like a summer job? Да, весь год, не круглогодно, но да. Like school year, from September to May. Да. Летом я работал в ресторане посудомойщиком. Do you know about my first job? Говори, давай говори. So, first of all, I was 11 years old. Which, 11. Yes, which oh. might have been illegal at the time. Это рабство. No, it was not. That was fine. I mean, <laughs> you know, the beginning of 2000s, hard times, so that was fine. Я знаю, что ты жила в Якутии. And that's where Очень I worked. Холодно. Well, I worked in the summer when we had summer holidays. So I was 11 and I was a ticket collector. So in Russian, we would call it... Oh, conductor, exactly, да? Exactly, yeah. По автобусу. And my working day started at 7 a.m. until around 9, 10 p.m. Ужас. 11 Yeah. Лет. Yeah. Ой. И если это не секрет, сколько там оклад? Well, for the whole day, we got paid 250 rubles if we had lunch. But if we didn't have lunch and just went the whole day without food, basically... In what year did it happen? 2004. Then 250 rubles is not bad. Well, yeah, it's like... Especially for 11-year-old people. It's like a thousand rubles now, maybe. You know, like if we're trying to find the equivalent. Mm -hmm. But yeah. And how many days did you work in a week? Five, four, depended. Yeah, but I was, I worked for about a month mm -hmm. and I was so proud of myself because I managed to buy my mom a gift for birthday молодец. with my own money. Oh, I was so proud. Молодец, молодец. И не просто как, <laughs> просто тратилась на yeah. бессмысленные вещи. Mm -hmm. Молодец. 
Так, Катя, скажи, почему ты выбрала именно эту должность? Это очень сложная должность работать с кондуктором. Well, because I was 11, I really wanted to have some sort of, you know, a first job to be able to make money and buy whatever I wanted because my family was, like, we were living very poorly, so I have to say it. And back in the day, there were not many options for us kids. So one of the options was a street cleaner. But my mom said, over my dead body. Over my dead body. Family friend uh, was a bus driver. He said, "You know what? I actually need somebody to help me." Ah, так ты таким образом ты нашла. So, and we kind of discussed, you know, that yeah, okay, I'm ready. It's summer holiday. You know, I'm I was waking up early and so on. So, yeah, that's how I got the job. Это был как его собственный автобус или муниципальный транспорт. No, it was his own. Ah, like back in the day, you could buy a bus. Yeah, so it, things were different back then at the beginning of the thousands. Вот это как система с маршрутками здесь. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it was like those little buses that we call пазики. But it was fun. Again, you were 11 years old. It's like да. adventure. I'm an adult. Look at me, совсем. adulting all over. But what about you? Why being a dishwasher? <laughs> well, конечно, это не самая интересная работа. Ну, я просто хотел накопить деньги на свои путешествия. Я любил ездить, укататься на на велике. This is how you see that was a European student. Because mm-hmm. in Russia, the да. only travel you could afford was, you know, to the neighboring town, probably. Да. Ну, я любил кататься с друзьями на mm-hmm. великах, ну, на велике по Нидерландам, и это было, ой, у меня dream. такие <laughs> отличные um, воспоминания. So, Benjamin, what was the process of getting that job like? I mean, were you interviewed or something? Вот ты имеешь в виду um, должность посудомойщика, да? Yeah, yeah, that felt job. <laughs> вот они было как собеседование с галстуком, <laughs> с, <laughs> с рубашкой. Ну, я просто подошел к шефу, шеф-повару mm-hmm. и говорю, я готов, я здесь, я молодой, я готов, чтобы запачкать. What questions did they ask you? Они просто задали вопрос, а ты как? Ты как лепесток или ты мужик? Окей. Он говорил, ну, это грязная работа. I'm ready for the dirty work. Я говорю, я готов, я хочу деньги, давайте. Fair enough. И он говорил, что ты будешь как воняться от растительного масла после работы. Well, that's that's the common thing, yeah, that waiters have to come through some servers, yeah. Да. But you didn't really have, like, an interview interview. Не собеседование, просто ты готов, ты готов к грязи. Should have seen that coming before asking you, yeah. <laughs> ну, кстати, um, ребята, у нас очень интересный эпизод подкаст, right. где мы обсуждали интервью и как устроиться на работу. Mm-hmm. Так обязательно да, посмотрите. Check that out. It has a lot of useful tips on how to deal with your job interview and so on. Make sure to check this out on the website. Обязательно. Or any other podcast streaming platform. We are everywhere. Да, мы, да, <laughs> везде. Яндекс, mm-hmm. Apple. Google Podcasts, yeah, we're everywhere. What about difficulties? So I would imagine that being, a, like, you know, working in the kitchen in general, you know, would be connected with some difficulties, like, you know, hot, humid. So what was difficult mm-hmm. in this job for you? Да, как ты сказала, влажность, это была большая mm-hmm. проблема. И, конечно, руки, да, это просто mm. уничтожил Ooh. мои руки. Did you have some sort of allergy to all these chemicals or something? Да, да, это было как моя аллергия как вспыхнула, если можно oh, так сказать, oh, красные руки mm-hmm. и просто мозоли повсюду. Mm-hmm. Ну, все равно смешно. You say that it kind of goes with the job, though, you know, when when you have a job like that, you would have, you know, yeah. Нельзя устроиться на mm-hmm. эту профессию и не знать это. That's true. That's да. true. Well, in my case, there were also some difficulties. Mm-hmm. Well, despite being an 11-year-old, I had to wake up at 6 a.m. Ужас. I had to come home at like 10 p.m. And in the meantime, we only had one meal. 
And I mean, when you're 11, you don't think much about that. Mm -hmm. Now I think about that, like, how could I work and live on one meal per day from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m.? Mystery. But other than that, I think it was the heat because that was summertime. You can imagine, you know, people packed mm -hmm. in this bus. And it's plus 35, so oh, sometimes yeah, it was just autopsy, impossible. Yeah, these autopsies are like pre-designed for the winter, and they contain the temperature. Well, no, no, but I mean in general, it's a metal can da. with windows. So yeah, I think that's what was. You're like a soldier. <laughs> soldier Katya. <laughs> Так, Катя, скажи, сколько у тебя должностей были до того, как ты решила стать преподавателем? Oh, actually, not many. I mean, that experience when I was 11 years old. And after that, I also helped my mom to do the typing job, you know, when I was a kid. But after that, not really. I only started tutoring when I was a student, but I already considered that, you know, Ты имеешь в виду, когда ты была студентом в универе? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what is interesting? I never really wanted to become a teacher. What? I have to come clean, you know, I never wanted to do that. <laughs> While I was... Well, I was studying to be a teacher just because nothing else seemed like it would fit, you know, STEM, technology, engineering, hell nah, that was definitely not right up my alley. So I thought, okay, I need something in humanities. Russian language literature, nah, it was not really my thing. So I decided why not languages. But all five years that I was studying, you know, I thought, nah, I'm not going to be a teacher, no. And then right after graduation, I entered another university and I was uh, getting my second degree in translation. Mm -hmm. And at that moment, I also decided to work at a school, a secondary school for a year. I thought, why not? You know, I still need the money. It does animate some много energy. Yeah, yeah. And I swear to God, that was one of the worst years of my life. And I said, I will never continue being a teacher. The kids loved me. I loved some of the kids, but it was just so emotionally draining. I just, and dealing with the parents, with mm -hmm. everything, too much bureaucracy. Oh my God, too much red tape. A lot. But the thing is that I got my degree in translation and I started working at a translation agency, but I could not do it. I was, you know, sitting, typing the translation. I was like, oh, there is nobody to talk to. And I realized I missed the energy that the kids gave. No communication, no energy, and I just wanted creativity. So I decided to actually find a job in a language school, and that was the school that only worked with adults. Mm -hmm. And I fell in love with my job. And that was the moment when I realized this is my calling. This is what I'm meant to do. And that was the day my life actually changed. Да, это не для всех. Это найти свою страсть, это сложно. But how? Wait, what about you? How did you? Well, first of all, what kind of jobs did you have? Because you, as far as I remember, had plenty of them. Да, я занимался много мелкими должностями. Like what? Well, я работал в велосипедном магазине. Я был как половина механиком, половина продавцом. Довольно интересная работа, мы просто да, jack of all trades именно. Да, зарплата небольшая. Usually at such positions, yeah, the salary kind of the money's joke. Ну, очень интересная работа. Я люблю работать с механическими вещами. So the bike shop. Ой, я тоже занимался переводом. Ну, это было в качестве как фрилансер. Ну, это не Небольшие деньги, небольшие деньги, деньги были от этого. Ну, This is what you did in Vegas as well, right? Не, не, не. В Вегасе я работал в гостинице. But not as a translator. Не как то, не, не. Oh, okay. Как администратор. Okay, I see. Я тоже работал в Лондоне как администратор в гостинице, и я любил эту работу. Очень, очень стрессовая работа. Ну. Очень, очень смешная. Всегда появляются проблемы с костями. И... Ну, я люблю изучать языки. И я люблю этот процесс. И so you decided просто... to kind of... Просто хотел делиться этим с, с людьми. Well, guys, we all know how important it is to find your calling in life, to understand what you want to do. And we do actually have an episode of a podcast about it, which is called How to Find Your Place in Life. And we have another episode which is devoted 
only to business, so where we discuss pros and cons of having our own business, which also might be interesting to you, so make sure to check that out. Well, Benjamin, thank you so much for telling the story about your first job experience. <laughs> Tough childhood, you know. But what about you guys? What was your first job experience? You can always share down there in the comments section. And in case you want to talk more about job interviews, cover letters, CV, all you want, make sure to check out our private Telegram chat. You can find the link below or check in Telegram Big Apple Chatbot. We're always there, all the teachers, to help you practice your English and answer any of your questions, day and night. And of course, don't forget to check out our marvelous website, which is BigAppleSchool.com. Anything you want, so make sure to check this out. And that was all for today. That was Katya and Benjamin. See you around. Thank you.